hello, comrades. My name is Nathan Hastings. I'm a member of the Irish Republican Socialist Party, and I'm also a, a former political prisoner. Um, the topic that I'm covering tonight is resistance inside and outside of prisons. Ireland has a, a rich history of both of those, and so I've taken an approach of outlining our history from the 20th century until present, um, giving an overview of the types of resistance and oppression faced inside and outside uh, the prisons. So I would just like to begin by thanking the organizers of this anti-imperial symposium for inviting us to be here today. And we'd also, of course, like to thank the other participants for their company and for their contributions. We extend our solidarity to the Turkish political prisoners being held in various countries and to all prisoners throughout the world who have lost their liberty as a result of their commitment to fighting for just causes. I'll give a brief overview of resistance to imperialism inside and outside the prisons in Ireland and in particular relating to the Irish Republican Socialist Movement of which I'm a member. Ireland's history of dealing with occupation, colonialism and imperialism is of course extensive and it stretches back many centuries. Um, throughout our history, the people of Ireland used various means of resistance, whilst the English used an array of cruel and oppressive measures to try to subdue us. Imprisonment for the English has been uh, a key tool in their arsenal. The history of political imprisonment in Ireland is a matter on which great volumes have been written. And of course, I do not intend to offer a comprehensive history in that regard, but rather to extract from this history key lessons that we can learn today um, as anti-imperialists who continue to see the use of imprisonment um, as a means of subduing the, the fight for freedom in our various countries. To understand the use of imprisonment as a tool of oppression in Ireland and to relate this to the struggles faced by revolutionary prisoners today, I'll just outline a brief history. In the year of 1916, there was a rising in Ireland known as the Easter Rising. The rising was ultimately subdued by the British, and initially it in fact had very little support. But this changed when the British used a tactic, which we have discussed today already. They executed the leaders of the rising by firing squad. The ideological guide for our movement, James Connolly, had been injured during the raising. He was unfit to stand before the firing squad, so they tied him to a chair and executed him um, as he sat there, already injured. Many of the Republicans who had taken part in the raising and were captured, they were interned in an internment camp in Wales where they were held without trial. Some years after the raising, a war was launched. It was known as the Tan War. And uh, that too culminated in the imprisonment of many Republicans. During this period, Republicans were imprisoned, isolated, tortured, executed, and also died on hunger strike. Many people would be familiar with the 10 hunger strikers of 1981, but there were also many hunger strikes in Ireland um, previous to that, and many of those had resulted in death also. Um, already in this period, just at the beginning of the 20th century, we saw the use of many forms of um, torture and also the use of imprisonment and measures um, against prisoners. The Tan War concluded when a portion of the Republican forces accepted an agreement that Ireland would be partitioned. In 1921, it came to be that out of Ireland's 32 counties, six were to remain under British control, while the other 26 were to be ruled by a pro-British puppet government. Many Republicans disagreed with this and continued the struggle. The civil war in which the British backed traitors defeated the Republicans. The six counties which Britain had kept were then ruled by the descendants of planters that Britain had sent there, mainly in the 1600s. They were Protestants loyal to Britain and they were determined to treat Catholics as second-class citizens. Catholics could not get jobs, education, housing, or political representation 
in the six counties, which they called Northern Ireland. In the 1960s, Catholics inspired by those in the United States began a civil rights campaign. This was repressed brutally by the British backed state, while the Irish government of the other 26 counties remained passive. The Republican forces, who had made several attempts to rebuild a campaign since the Civil War, suddenly found their numbers swelled by those who were angered at the British response to the civil rights campaign. The existing prison system in the six counties at that time could not contain the numbers who were arrested in this period, and they were held in large camps. Instead, especially after the introduction of internment in 1971, when mass arrests were carried out and prisoners were taken and held without trial. These camps, which became known as the cages, held prisoners in poor conditions. When Republican prisoners rioted and burned the cages in 1974, they were exposed to the, by the British to an agent known as CR gas. And still today, those who were affected by that gas suffer from cancers and other illnesses linked to it, including a member of my own family who died of cancer as a result of having been exposed to this CR gas during the period when Republican prisoners had taken uh, charge of the camp and had burned it. By the mid-1970s, the British government and its puppet state wanted Republican prisoners to be taken out of these cages. The cages appeared too much like prisoner of war camps, and at the time, the British wanted to portray the struggle as a criminal conspiracy, not a war. They wanted, too, to treat Republican prisoners as criminals. It was around this period in the mid-1970s that our movement was formed, the Irish Republican Socialist Movement. The movement was committed to anti-imperialism and socialism. With Republican prisoners being pushed into cellular confinement and the new Hitchblack prison structures, with which many of you may be familiar, they were to be expected to wear prison uniform and to be treated as ordinary criminals. Prisoners of our movement, the Republican Socialist Movement, like others, began refusing to conform. Over the following years, the prison struggle was to see prisoners from our movement held in terrible conditions. They were attacked as they used toilets, so they began to wipe their excrement on the walls. They refused to wear prison uniform, so they were wrapped only in blankets. They were confined to their cells with only a lump of sponge to sleep on. Their windows were broken, so they were often freezing cold, and they were routinely beaten and violated. In 1981, 10 hunger strikers died in opposition to these conditions, including three from our movement, the Irish Republican Socialist Movement. Some of those in our movement were imprisoned with these men at the time and remember and have recalled vividly the horrors which they witnessed. Conditions steadily improved in the decades following this in the hitch blocks. However, in 1998, an agreement was made by the provisional movement, Sinn Féin, bourgeois nationalists, and the British government. The agreement was heralded as a peace agreement, but it brought no relief from imperialism or capitalism. The hitch blocks where the 10 men had died were closed down, and Republican prisoners were once again told that they would have to go into the general population if they were arrested. This resulted in riots and struggle within the new high security prison, McGabry Prison in the north of Ireland in the early 2000s. Ultimately, prisoners were given segregation, but the regime in place there today for Republican prisoners remains one of the strictest in Europe. I personally spent five years in this prison where we were subjected to forced strip searches, a degrading controlled movement regime, and where I saw other Republicans isolated. The above outlines countless oppressive measures faced by anti-imperialist prisoners in Ireland over the past century alone. However, it more importantly demonstrates the history of resistance within the prison and the use of hunger strikes in particular. In terms of forms of resistance outside the prisons, 
It is theoretically obvious that Vladimir Lenin laid down the necessary funds for the movement of anti-imperialism. In practice, his vision has proven correct. We must build a bulwark against imperialism, which manifests at present in the globalist neoliberalism, seeking to break down sovereign borders to exploit the world without impediment, as we see it attempting to do in the Middle East and in Ukraine against the people of Donbass, using Nazi, uh, a Nazi military to um, attack ethnic minorities. While key anti-imperialist forces today continue to stymie, repel, and counter advance the forces of imperialism, it is the building of anti-imperialist states and government which has prevented the imperialist forces from achieving their goals. In this regard, the IRSP is wasting no time in Ireland. We are determined to build a revolutionary state and to actively challenge on a global scale the imperialists. We hope that we can all do this together. Let us endeavor to achieve that. Victory to the prisoners. And in an old Irish phrase, Sir Sigajel, freedom forever. Thank you, comrades.